What Chief. Do we do? Go ahead, Chief. Oh, we're on? <laughs> we're on, Chief. <laughs> I always ask that just to make sure. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone out there in Facebook land. Thanks for tuning in today. We truly appreciate your support and you taking some time with us today. Before we get to our guest, and today we have two special guests. Pretty cool. Let me introduce Julie and Leah. How are you ladies doing today? Hey, doing good, Chief. How are you? I am doing outstanding. How about you, Leah? Hi, Chief. I'm good. How about you? Oh, I'm Very great. Good. I'm great. I'm so excited about today's guests. Um, Julie, let's get it started. Can you tell us who we have today? Absolutely. We are excited to welcome today's guests. Our friends at Muscle Farmed helped us connect with them. They are both passionate about our military and about working with military dogs who provide invaluable service to our men and women in uniform. Today, we have Will Chesney, a retired Navy SEAL who deployed twice to Iraq and four times to Afghanistan. He earned a silver star and a purple heart. He handled Cairo, the working dog who was part of the SEAL Team Six Raid on the Bin Laden Compound. His new book, No Ordinary Dog, chronicles his service with Cairo. Excellent. We are also thrilled to have Justin Melnick with us. He was a photographer embedded with the troops in Afghanistan and spent years as a police officer in Indiana, helping them with active shooting training. He also trained his canine Dita and together they're part of the cast of CBS SEAL Team. Wow. I don't know how to follow an introduction like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. <laughs> Thank, thanks for having us on here today. Very Thank much. you both for joining us. Uh, we're so honored to have you on. And for everybody who's watching, be sure to leave your questions for Will and Justin in the comments. If you want to share some love with them, that would be great. Um, we'll be reading these throughout the broadcast. So uh, we want to make sure your questions are shared. And Chief Chats are every Tuesday and Thursday. So following us will help you stay informed on your next guests. If you're going to start a watch party, now is a good time. Watch parties. <laughs> <So> we'll <laughs> we'll just thanks. Get for, all that. Get all that stuff out of the way. <laughs> get it out the way now. Go ahead. Hit the share button. Hit the share and like button. Right. Hey, Will Justin, thanks so much uh, uh, for being here with us today. Hey, before we get started, one of you is a you know was a Navy SEAL. Was a Navy SEAL. One of you plays a Navy SEAL on TV. I got a joke. How many Navy SEALs does it take to change a light bulb? <laughs> oh well, hold on one second. One second. There's the seal holding the light bulb. Mm -hmm. Then there's the other seal doing his hair. Yeah. Uh, oh God. <laughs> uh, wait, damn, I got it. Wait, George. Maybe I'll be in charge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's the answer. Navy SEALs don't change light bulbs. They take them out. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> All right, corny jokes are out the way, guys. That was it. Did you make that one up, Chief? That, corny yeah. jokes. Yeah. Come up with that one. You come up with that one. Yeah. Break you haven't heard that one, Will? I ain't heard that one yet. <laughs> I can't believe you're not gonna razz him about being in the Air Force or the Chair Force or something like that. Ah, uh, jokes. Everybody's got jokes. <laughs> I don't have any good ones right now. But yeah. Don't worry, I might, have, I might come up with a couple of good ones here in a minute. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, but, but seriously, Justin, Will, thank you so much for, for being here with us. It's, a, it's an honor to have you here with us today. Uh, can you tell us where each of you are coming from right now, where you're at? I'm in uh, Texas. I'm, in, I'm up in San Inez, California, which is probably the closest part of California to actually be Texas. People here are <laughs> up here. Uh, people here believe in what America stands for and their American values here. Uh, and it's just hot as hell. So yeah, <laughs> <Kind> of, <laughs> I'm around Houston, down, so uh, down in Texas with y'all. Warm. <laughs> well, you can be an honorary Texan today with us. Thank we'll you, ma'am. allow that. <laughs> You're welcome, sir. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I should go get my Stetson <laughs> in the other house though. <laughs> I wanted to show my great Navy SEAL curls. Part of playing a Navy SEAL on TV really requires having fantastic hair. Uh, the job is looking good. Always. <laughs> Half the job is looking good. You know, it's, it's Number like, one, always look cool. Always look cool, man. <laughs> so, yeah, you do a good job. No. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, no, it's, it's really, you know, it's, it's really cool. Um, 
you know, knowing knowing people like Cheese uh, that have lived such incredibly honorable, um, exemplary careers and being able to replicate them on the main screen. Uh, I never wanted it, you know, every kid wants to be a Navy SEAL when they grow up. I just didn't like the water and uh, getting to play a Navy SEAL on TV is probably one of the coolest things in the entire world. Cause it's, it just, you know, it's like a lot. Of, I, I've said this a couple of times and I don't know how else to articulate it, but like most kids grow up worshiping Superman and Batman. You know, I didn't care about those weenies, man. Those guys had nothing on Navy SEALs, you know? So, so getting to actually, portray one of my childhood heroes and my current I'm, I'm still they're still my heroes you know it's like my you know um i i you know uh, the superhuman powers that humans can have being willing to sacrifice time with their family uh time with their kids uh missing birthdays to go fight a war to protect people they've never met and help help create infrastructure and uh things that we take for granted like clean water and education and medical care for for women let's say in afghanistan for two decades you know people have been enlisting in this mil in, in our military to go to a foreign soil to go help people they'll never ever see again in their life when they're done but they do it and and that's the superpower and you know and and you know guys like will uh they take it to the next level because they spend more time away than they do at home. When you get to that level of military, um, there's no, there's no, there's structure, but it's so chaotic and crazy that you're gone. Uh, so yes, sorry for my long winded answer, but it is such an honor to be able to be here with you guys and to even be sharing a zoom call with someone like cheese. So, who's, so, so before we keep going, uh, Justin, who's, who's sitting next to you right now? Oh, just, just introduce her. Nobody, you know, no one cares about her. Oh, he's asking. They're asking. So this is Dita. This is my police dog um, that got me into Hollywood and got me this opportunity to play the Navy SEAL uh, and has been my partner on and off screen for the last six years and uh, my best friend in the entire universe. All right. Will, are yours tired? I know they were on here earlier. Are they around? Up here. Nala, come here. Nala. Your dog's named Nala? Nala. She's moving slow. Her name is Nala. The kid named her after Lion King. <laughs> oh, I like it, so I kept it. Hi, she, she just got off the water and she is a little exhausted. I mean, you know, give her a five Hi. minute nap back. And Will has another dog named Axel. I think it's hidden somewhere. He's probably sleeping somewhere. He's tired. He's over there sleeping in his cage right now. He's over Kind of <laughs> Nala needs a Bravo team tennis ball. Yeah, she does. <laughs> she oh, does. look at that. <laughs> I'll get her attention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are so beautiful. Thanks for sharing them uh, with us and our audience. Yeah, yeah. And thanks for the kind words, Justin. That's, that's amazing. I know you do a great job portraying that. And obviously, as, as being a dog handler and a dog lover, I mean, just look at the love you and Dita have right there. So that's that's good stuff, man. You know, it's excellent. You're a great person. Dita's a great girl too. <laughs> so you guys, um, we're all in self isolation. How have you been holding up during the COVID nineteen pandemic? I've been. Uh, I can't complain. I've been busy with the book release. Uh, yeah. Good. COVID's kind of put a different spin on it than what we had originally planned, but we got a great team pushing the. Uh, pushing the book out there and so far we've made it work we've stayed flexible and i think we've done a really really good job and uh the i've been reading the feedback online and it's good to see the reviews <laughs> that's what really matters people really do enjoy the book and i've got yeah to read yeah. her a bit every night before she goes to sleep that's awesome so Aww. yeah but uh other than that we've been doing just staying busy how about uh how about y'all i've been working from home doing this this is what we've been doing right here yep, <laughs> yep. every week Every week, twice a week, we do it. Try to hang, you know, get to hang, meet some cool people, yeah. uh, um, you know, get to learn a little bit about their life, their family, what's going on in their lives. So it's been, you know, really eye opening and really exciting, really fun to get to chat with, with people like you, and, you know, you, you and Justin. So what about you, Justin? 
Oh man, the second we heard about the lockdown, I went and grabbed all my full chem bio suits and all my work loadout gear. I was like, oh, this is going to kick off. Um, it didn't kick off, thank God, as bad as, as I think everybody at Upper Echelon's government thought it could have gone. Um, and we got really lucky. I think we dodged a bullet. But as soon as I realized we were in the clear, I ordered a bunch of gym equipment off Amazon, went to track <laughs> supply, got some rubber mats, built a huge home gym, nice. and uh, literally uh, just been pounding muscle farm protein <laughs> supplements, <laughs> taking pre-workout three times a day, and just crushing the gym and ranch work. Uh, built a whole dog agility course on the backside of the property for all the local sheriffs and highway patrol guys because they have nowhere to train their dogs uh, within like 200 miles of here. So uh, I took, I took uh, one of my favorite canine agility courses uh, was actually the Marine Corps Camp Pendleton canine uh, uh, agility course. So I copied that thing and built it up here. And, uh, and we're, we're almost done with the fast rope tower. We're doing a 15 foot fast rope tower so we can teach all the cops how to rope their dogs. You went big. Yeah, <laughs> a frame, a bunch of like crazy ladder obstacles. Awesome. Um, it's been really fun. So we've just been here, you know, swinging shovels and uh, throwing dirt around, rented some heavy duty equipment, some bulldozers, learn how to learn how to use those, which for <laughs> New York City, it's, I've come a long way. I'm pretty impressed. Um, That's amazing. Wow. Just since the pandemic that you've been able to do all that. That's, <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. Well, people ask like, you know, the only difference you know, when you live in the country, if I'm talking to someone, we're six feet away anyway. You know, you know, it's like <laughs> the only good people up here, they'll they'll look you in the eye and shake your hand when they meet you. Now we just don't shake hands. Maybe it's like an elbow bump or like an air high five or that mm -hmm. awkward moment of like, <laughs> what do we do? Um, but yeah, you know, listen, I feel I feel slightly guilty, but I feel incredibly blessed that um you know, life has been very fortunate for us up here in in, in, in the sticks. So Hey, Will, Justin, we know you love our nation's war fighters and their families, right? There's no question about that. Our heroes would love to hear some words of inspiration from you during this time. What can you share with all of them out there across the globe? The world is messed up right now. It is, there's a, there's a lot of things that none of us can explain or understand what's going on. Uh, and, and generally my whole, you know, I've always kind of thought, meet violence with violence and, and don't let it escalate. And, and now I'm starting to realize that, you know, I, I think we need to start embracing love a little bit more. Um, I know it, it's such a, it's such a complex time. I, uh, people, we need to pause. I think, I think people need to pause and not act. I, I think we need to pause. I need to, we need to think for a second and we need to really try and figure out, uh, how we move forward because what's happening right now is not working and there's a lot of horrible things on both sides going down uh man you guys you know ev everybody that wears a uniform whether fire military law enforcement you know people have put their communities before themselves and it's such an admirable thing, and 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 I commend everybody that does that because you sign up for a roller coaster, especially in times like this. And it's so hard to see what's it, nothing is clear right now. It, it, things seem so much clearer before, and, and now it's it's it. I don't. I'm I'm so I'm so confused with what's going on and how to fix the world. And and like I don't you know I just I just think compassion, compassion and trying to understand where everybody's coming from right now is, is, uh, is, is, is maybe, I don't know, man, I'm, I'm out. I'm tapping out. I don't know. I, I wish I had a better answer for you guys. I'm so confused right now. Yeah, no, definitely. I, um, it's a weird time right now. Um, I think we should all just come together as much as possible. I mean, you know, there's been mistakes made, but what's happening right now is not the right answer. I agree. I mean, I used to be a Navy SEAL and sometimes violence is, but you know, I know they used to look at things differently as well, but now I look at it 
I look at things a lot differently. I think compassion is definitely important. Love. I know people do make mistakes and what happens is sometimes terrible, but I don't think more violence is the answer at all. No, no. Mm-hmm. Well, this is a very weird time, but um, I, I agree with what Justin says. I think uh, so there, uh, maybe understanding. Yeah. So during the COVID-19 pandemic, so Leah and I were civilians with the Army and Air Force Exchange Service while Chief is in uniform. And we have about 33,000 civilian associates all over the world who work in our stores and in our restaurants, in our malls. They've been coming to work every day despite COVID-19, despite the pandemic. Um, our locations have stayed open to serve war fighters and 85% of our workforce is connected to the military in some way. They would really, really love to hear some words of inspiration from each of you. It, it means a lot to them um, to be able to hear from people in the in the public eye. Um, so if you guys could share some words of hope with us, we would really appreciate it. Of course, yeah. Uh, thank you all so much. I mean, that's amazing. Those numbers are amazing. Thank you for everybody that's doing their part. You said this is a terrible time. We need to come together. Thank you all for for doing that and I know some people aren't able to support but if you are that's amazing that y'all are doing that especially with such high numbers thank you for what you're doing and that's awesome keep crushing it and <laughs> yeah it's awesome so I, I I never served in the military um probably one of my greatest regrets in life but I did spend some time in Afghanistan yeah. and uh the PX exchanges were one of those things that brought you back to home. So, you know, you're, you're, you might as well be in like Tatatouille or whatever the planet from Star Wars. I'm, I'm not a big Star Wars fan, but I'm trying to think of the farest planet away. When you're in Afghanistan and you're out in those mountains and you're in a village that is basically the same way it was as 400 years ago, you know, and you're cold and you're hungry and you come back and you've got the PX there and you can pick up things that remind you of home, things that mm-hmm. bring the comforts of home to you downrange. Uh, that is, I mean, I wasn't even there fighting, but that saved me, you know, like it, it's, it's hard. I couldn't even imagine what an, a 20 year old kid who had never been overseas, you know, left his family in, in the Midwest and went over to fight this war, you know, what, what their experience would be like without you guys and without the service that you provide to them. Um, so it's all part of one big effort, one big team. And uh, what you guys do out there is, is phenomenal. And, and, and yeah, it's scary and dangerous going out to a foreign country. It's scary and dangerous going out during COVID-19, but you know, everyone puts their part and the train keeps moving. So thank you guys. Thank, thank you, you for that, it means a lot. Thank you, thank you. Hey, Will, so let's turn to you for a minute. I know you have a book out, right? No Ordinary Dog, it's mm-hmm. out there it's for sale, right? What can you let the viewers know about it that might entice them? That get, what, what would they find in this book that would make them want to buy it? What like, juicy details can you give us, Will? I'm gonna, it's like a Navy SEAL Marley and me, right? All right yeah. <laughs> it's, um, it's, anybody, it's, a nice. good, it's a good book for anybody who loves dogs, loves animals, loves the military, wants to be a SEAL, wants to be a handler, wants to just learn about, it's a piece of history. And, uh, you know, it's, it's it tells about Cairo. Um, the whole book just kind of it covers my beginning, my childhood, it's my, my buds experience, which is a pretty intense experience. You know, some say it's some of the mili- hardest military training in the world. You know, it's, it was a, so it covers that. And then it covers kind of, you know, these dogs have to go through their own training and we have to acquire certain dogs. You know, th- these are not <clears throat> easily attainable dogs. Not all the dogs like Dita. Uh, but uh, covers that and then how we met some of the intense training that we got to uh, conduct together a lot of the or some of the missions that we got to go on together and then including the bin Laden mission and then it covers um, kind of some of the I suffered a TBI traumatic brain injury by a hand grenade covers sort of that my out processing and Cairo's retirement and end of life as well and how we were there for each other so it's kind of the overview of the book, I guess. Oh. Oh. That's a great snapshot for those that are interested. So if people are interested, you know, 
Uh, where, where, where is it on Amazon? Where can people pick up this book? Should be get on Amazon for sure. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's like Cairo's name was released in the media after the mission, and uh, a lot of some of the stuff that came out wasn't completely accurate. And I even maybe have seen somebody that said they had them. So this is a big piece of history. It's an honor to be able to tell Cairo's story. It's an honor to be able to shed light on not just me. Well, I said I don't, I don't really matter on me. There's <clears throat> way guys that did a lot more, or there's way more guys that did a lot more than I did. It's an honor to be able to tell Cairo's story and shed the light on what these amazing dogs can do. And uh, yeah, I think we did a good job doing it. Wasn't Cairo the only team member's name that was released after the, the, the raid? It was, and there's some things that just, you know, weren't completely accurate. So it's, uh, it's, it just tells a piece of history and uh, it tells the truth. And it's good. It brings attention to what these dogs can do. It tells the truth about it. it brings attention to the great foundations that support these dogs, like uh, my Team member Jimmy Hatch with Spike's Canine Fund and Mike Ritland with uh, Warrior Dog. You know, these dogs do a lot for us. They literally lay down their lives for us. Um, we treat them with the same respect. And uh, my ex-team members also have these foundations that give them uh, either medical treatment or homes or um, some ballistic vests, some of the equipment that they need to, to do their jobs and keep them safe. We consider these dogs part of our family. You know, we asked them to literally risk their lives for us. So we want to give them the best equipment that we can and the best care that we can. And, we, you know, they're, they're members of our family. Yeah, the Warrior Dog Foundation is a phenomenal organization. Uh, Mike Ritland, who's a former SEAL handler, takes retired military and law enforcement dogs that are slightly non-sociable, that couldn't be retired out to their handlers uh, and brings them out to a ranch in Texas and basically works them and lets them have, you know, a retirement life in a great environment. You know, I believe, uh, to be fair, Lewis Raisin, I thought this years ago, I used to help TSA at the airport, you know, sniffer narcotics and, and, and sorry, not the narcotics bombs. Um, and, and just, you know, from that aspect, but also from the military aspect with some military working dog handlers, I speak to them. And I always wondered, I was like, why don't military dogs get like a, like when they retire, if they go to their handler, the government should give them like a retirement check to help support, <laughs> you know, I don't know, maybe I'm off the mark here, but you know, kind of the, you know, these dogs probably been through some things, maybe they got hurt. So they still have to go to the vet afterwards and those bills could really add up. Oh yeah. yeah. But maybe free vet visits at the base. There that help cover those costs oh. for handlers. Mm -hmm. I think that should be something. I don't know if there's legislation or something. I saw something a couple of years ago uh, talking about it, but I don't know where it went after that. Look, uh, Spike's canine fund with Jimmy Hatch on that one. I think he provides some medical assistance for that. I think the good man. There's a lot of great foundations. problems with their, with their military or law enforcement working dog after it retires and needs some help. You, re, you contact me through social media. We'll make it right. We'll fix it. Oh, there wow. you go. You heard it. Right there. Right from my mouth. So you go. So if you have a dog, a military working dog or, or police, uh, police enforcement dog out there and, and it's retired and you need assistance with medical bills. If you were the app, yeah, if you served in the military or law enforcement and it was your dog and you're out and you're not getting the funding that you need to help vet bills, you let us know. Oh, you have a big heart. Thank you for that. It's, it's our duty. Yep. Thank you. And so you guys heard it. You want to get Will's book so that you can find out the real story and you can read Cairo's story and yeah. what. So Will, um, how did you become involved with dog handling and what made you, um, what inspired you to become a Navy SEAL? Well, I wanted to serve my country as a kid. <clears throat> I uh, always loved the water growing up and uh, said, uh, I heard SEAL training was pretty tough. I wanted to test myself. I, I, um, I didn't really want to go to college. I didn't, if, you know, if I wanted to be a doctor, lawyer, or some kind of education, I just wanted more of a hands-on type of, type of guy. I wanted to serve the country and test myself. And uh, SEALs had, it seemed like they had a pretty cool job. And um, I think it was around middle school, I decided I want to be a SEAL. And I left for the, right after high school, I left for the military. I um, made it through BUDS, basic underwater demolition SEAL train, made it through successfully. And um, once I got to my team, or my squadron, I saw just, I saw the value in the dogs. Um, it, as a SEAL, it doesn't stop there. Um, you have other duties, collateral duties, um, whether you do whatever you're drawn to. I was drawn to being a SEAL, that was my passion. Then once you're there, what is your passion? Skydiving, breaching, sniping. I grew love dogs. Um, 
I saw how valuable they were on one of my first appointments. There's a quote in the book. I remember being in the team room once and somebody saying, raise your hand if a dog has ever saved your life. And I, everybody's hand went up. You know, everybody had at least one dog story to tell where a dog saved them somehow, or, or at least for getting injured. It was, it was, and then I saw that uh, on my first deployment. And once I saw the value and, you know, not everybody wants to uh, handle the dog. It's an intense job as it is being a SEAL. You get a lot of stuff going on and it's a dangerous job. Handling a dog while doing all that with gunfire and explosion is not, it's not easy. A lot of guys, you know, don't want to handle a dog. Some people aren't dog people. And it's a lot of responsibility, but um, I guess if I had the chance to save one of my teammates from getting injured or shot, killed from, from using my dog, and I put in all that work, and I don't care, I'll babysit a dog all day long. If I had that one opportunity, I'm, that was, uh, plus I love dogs. So I was like, okay, I'm in, let's do this. And then it makes me, it makes me more valuable too. And, you know, the more valuable are, the more you, uh, you get to work. So I just try to make myself as valuable as possible. I was around a lot of, uh, guys that were hard to keep up with you know oh my goodness those guys are amazing uh i tried to keep up with those guys and uh make myself as valuable as possible so i could stick around because you can be asked to leave at any time if you're not holding up your end of the uh holding up your end so I tried to make myself valuable and i saw how valuable the dogs were and it was a uh, it was a very um i was very blessed I was very fortunate I, i'd obviously worked out well what 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 Will's not telling you guys is is Will and everyone on his team. You're talking about a group of dudes that. Hey Tita, I hear him. Thank you. You're talking about a group of dudes that, if they decided to be professional athletes, they would have been at the top of whatever sport they chose. If they chose to be bankers, they would have run our financial institutions. We're talking about a group of dudes that are the most capable at anything that they put their mind to and they can adapt and overcome. They, thankfully for our country, they decided to become Navy SEALs, you know, keep us safe. But, you know, there, there's no, there's no slow day for these dudes. You know, they, they are, they're pushing each other to always be better. And, uh, and it's really impressive to, to, to see what they're capable of. I mean, it's like everybody though. It's like the whole team and it doesn't just take us, right? It takes every single support person, even the pilots, the people to get us, our people to feed us. Like we can't just do everything, you know, like well, we do our job. People are the same way as you. Everybody you crushes it. At any time. So they're always pushing to be better yeah. and do better. That's it, man. And we all come together and we, uh, we'll look at what we can accomplish, you know, even under some terrible circumstances, like with the helicopter crash and, we could have went from losing a lot of good guys to um, guys didn't skip a beat, crushed it. And even the helicopter pilots were like, hey, I'll, you know, this is not a big deal. I'll fly this thing out of here. You know, everybody just, you know, does their job. Everybody's a professional. Just put in that work to, uh, to get the mission accomplished. And it's, it's such an honor to be a part of it, you know. You, you play to the level of your competition, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, uh, you surround yourself with uh, great people, you know, you, you, you surround yourself with. I was just trying to keep up with those guys and the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> so, Will, um, you talked a little bit about Cairo and he was your, your partner. What made him so special and what did he mean to you? What do you want people to know about him? Um, I said the uh, Cairo's name was released to the media. The only thing people really know about Cairo is uh, the Bin Laden mission. There was a whole lot more to Cairo than just that. <clears throat> like he was shot even before the mission. They uh, shot through his leg where they had to put a plate and he shot through his chest. And a lot of the times the dogs don't survive. Unfortunately, the dogs don't survive when they get shot like that. Um, he did survive. Not only did he survive, <clears throat> amazing people help save his life and get him fully recovered to where we went on and, and did that. And then that's not even the only part it's afterwards as well with his retirement. And then there's other missions that we did and even the train that we went through and it's, there's just so much more to Cairo and him. Everybody loved him. He really was a good dog. It was, um, what you say separates him. I would say is that we all had great working dogs. Um, they're all going to do their job. Amazing. That's why we have the selection process, just like the seals, the dogs, you know, when the, the dogs put on the vest, we like to say they have the switch where they turn it on. And it's time to go to work. Just like any service dog, any working dog. When you come home, take that vest off, turn that switch off. Some dogs, some of these working dogs can't turn it off as much as others. Cairo, sure. turn it off. He really could. He, um, even towards the end of his life, especially. Um, even when he was working, 
he would go, I could take him around and he would lean up against you. He was leaner. <laughs> I think around the offices, he'd lean up against all the people, all the women. No, he didn't care. Uh, he'd cover you in hair. He had periodontal disease. So he'd get his, he would put his mouth right in your face and blow his hot breath in your face. <laughs> Everybody loved him, right? So he was a pretty friendly dog. Not all dogs have that. You know, some of these, these are working animals. You always treat them with respect. You know, these are working dogs. These are not, you know. Um, but Cairo was one of those dogs that, you know, always watched him, but he, people loved him. He would pet him. And when he got retired, he, he would be on the couch with my buddy's kids, like, you know, two kids in their lap, like just, he could turn it off real well. He was, uh, he even got attacked by my girlfriend's mom's bulldog once on, I got him, she, uh, she got him on a leg a little bit over a toy. Cairo didn't do anything to retaliate. He was just real laid back, mellow. But when it came to working, he could work. He was a great, worker. all the dogs that we had at the command were working. I, I can only imagine that little bulldog at the dog park the next day. <laughs> but he's like, yo, I just tagged a Navy SEAL. Ah, kind of like, I got time for this. What happened? <laughs> I don't care about that toy. <laughs> hey, Will, I got a question. Maybe it's probably due to my, my, excuse my ignorance. So when you're out on the team with a dog, you said Cairo got shot, right? Leg and in the chest. Are, are, are your medical professionals, are they like, I know they're trained for human. Are they also trained like to help the animal at the same time? Is, is that how that works? We do, yeah. We put on our training. Um, even as you know, we have our medics on the team. Mm -hmm. We have actual medics. We have seals that have just that aren't medics anymore that have been through training, and even the guys who haven't been through all that have still been through some sort of medical training, including probably canine training. If not, you know, we do. That's all we do. You know, that's all we do is train and be prepared. So, uh, guys are um, even if like I were to go down, guys should be able to pick up the dog and at least handling if not working you know guys are like prepared when, wow. when dogs go down one of my teammates he was a medic but it worked out even better anybody on the team should have been able to run back and help me he was smart enough i mean it was just you know it was such a terrible circumstance Kyra getting shot i thought he i literally thought he was dead i got to him he was alive but it was cool to see like all that training we had done in such a bad situation my teammate knew the deal. He's like, they don't need me. He ran back. He knew Cairo needed. The dogs have their own medical kit. I, I, I give him what he needs as I'm working on Cairo's equipment. And it's just that teamwork. He's, he was stuffing Cairo's uh, chest full of dolls and saved his life. Mm -hmm. um, not only that, the pilots came in, risked their lives. The surgeons on the base, they, they worked on him. They saved him. They didn't have, they don't, you know, they don't have to. He's not a soldier. He's a dog. They treated him just like a soldier. Uh, we got him to the veterinary staff. That was uh, amazing. I didn't think he would make it through the night, and he did. Everybody, uh, even the rehab people in Texas, got him back to full recovery. Like, that's amazing, right? Everybody who had a, something to do with it was like, wow. Incredible story. That's special, special job. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. So when you were um, sharing your story about Cairo, there was a lot of likes and loves coming through on the live feed. Um, so thank you again for, for sharing all those details about Cairo and why he was so special. Um, Justin, you also have a special dog. We've seen a little bit of Dita um, on here already. Is there anything else that you want to share or tell us about Dita? Yeah, sorry. Let me just clear my tears up from that. that, that <laughs> yeah. I had a little, I had a little, it was forming. It was forming. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's just like, I, you know, we did an episode, we did an episode in season one where, where we thought Dita went down. Uh, and it turned out to be the bad guy's blood after one of our teammates shot him in the face while she was on the bike. Um, but, you know, just um, going through that, going through that, and, and just, you know, listening to his story and just, I can't even fathom what was going through, what was going through your mind um, on that right there. Uh, yeah, it was just good to see that he was alive, but he just, like I said, they helped save his life. Hope. He, he was about to die. My teammates helped save his life. I, and, you know, I did my part too, of course, but I might not have been able to do it without him. So yeah, it was great. Like, wow. Amazing. It works. If we all come together and work as a team, we can accomplish some cool stuff. That yeah, is but, proof. I, that's proof right there. 
So Dita, Dita, sorry, what was your question? Give me your question one more time. You've shared some about Dita and you said that Dita is your best friend. Um, but is there anything else that you want to share with everybody watching about Dita? Dita, you know, I didn't want her. I didn't want, I've never been a dog. I never had a dog. Um, my roommate had her and we were out training actually in Texas. This whole conversation always comes back to Texas. <laughs> um, we were down in Texas in a small little area called Tarpley. You ever hear of that? Near no. a smaller <laughs> place called Bandera. Uh, San Antonio? Uh, yeah, north northwest of San Antonio. I know where you're at. Yeah, all right. Yep. So we're out there training and uh and he was like, I got to get rid of Dita. I was like, so one of the dudes there was like, oh, I'll take her four month old Belgian Mal. I'm like, no, absolutely not. So ended up with her. Um, she was originally supposed to be a search and rescue dog and that got botched. And then she ended up going down the road of narcotics. And, uh, and then she went from that to being a TV star. And from there now, her, her main sole purpose in law enforcement is a uh, school resource officer. So oh. we, schools, we do dog awareness. She does math. She knows, she knows basic algebra. She oh knows. Oh my a, gosh. Yeah, a is she available for history. tutoring? No, I'm just what? kidding. <laughs> it's available for tutoring. Um, so she goes in the classroom, she puts on dog demos. You know, part of it is to teach kids how to interact with dogs. And then as the kids get older, you know, it's, you know, especially right now, then, you know, there's a lot of bad press around law enforcement right now. There's, there's been a few dudes out there that have, you know, no, well, anyway, they, uh, it's been always important to us to be able to reach out to the community and, and put a familiar face on, on law enforcement to, uh, to humanize the badge. You know, it's, it, it's important for people to know that they can approach us, that they, can that they can come to our charity functions that they can help us integrate into their community and come to us with their problems um so you know now we really use dita and she's been so phenomenal uh on bringing our community together uh people from far and near you know in, in indiana always come whenever we're in town they always come by our town to come meet Dita and come hang out at the kids park or the water park or you know we'll go out and just spend our time uh during the day in, in, in with the population just trying to engage uh it's really really important especially coming up in the next two or three years five years 20 years of our life that law enforcement really takes that takes that approach on how do we serve our community better And that's hey, Justin, can you can you tell us about being embedded with the troops as a photographer and your transition to working as a police officer? You kind of hinted at it. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I I was uh, I, I started out my days working in nightclubs in New York City. <laughs> long <laughs> transition, um, long series of events ended up making me just disgusted in humanity, and uh, I grabbed a camera and went to Uganda, started in 2006 when Joseph Kony was ravaging the country and decimating it and, and annihilating, that was horrible. Um, anyway, from there, kind of just caught the travel bug and started hitting every war zone I could find uh, and just grabbing a camera and a one-way plane ticket and getting lost and trying to tell people stories. Uh, that led me to the New York National Guard, and I went with them to Afghanistan because they had a really interesting mission. Uh, the Fighting 69th has a phenomenal history as a military unit. Uh, Google it, Fighting 69th. Um, but one of the most interesting things for me was a National Guard unit was taking on a traditional SF mission, uh, a Green Beret mission in Afghanistan. They were going there to train Afghan police to be police. Um, and the thing that made that so interesting to me was that it, the Fighting 69th was made up of a lot of New York City cops. So you had NYPD cops, one of, one of the largest, actually the largest police department in the world, 
with the best training in the world going over to Afghanistan to teach Afghan cops how to be cops was phenomenal and, and fascinating to me. So uh, I blew out with those dudes uh, and I spent about three weeks with them in Afghanistan uh, telling their story and it was phenomenal. It wasn't just training, it was guys, families back home sending school supplies and backpacks on their own dime over to their husbands. And then the husbands putting together ops to go out into the community and disperse toys and school supplies and backpacks to kids um, in the outskirts of Kabul. Uh, it was just so inspirational seeing what all these families were doing to help people they've never met. Um, so uh, 69th rotated home and I didn't want to leave Afghanistan. So I literally spent another two and a half months there uh, hitchhiking from fob to fob, outpost to outpost on Blackhawks and Chinooks and jumping on convoys with dudes and just literally meeting guys in parking lots and rolling out with them. Uh, the PAO office was, was really supportive of me. I was pumping up a lot of great content for them. Mm -hmm. So they didn't mind me staying there. Uh, and it was just really incredible to see what these people were pulling off, you know, it's like the odds are not in their favor. I mean, obviously it's still going on over there, you know, another 10 years later. Um, but the, the, the will to carry on, despite what popular opinion is just to go there and do the right thing to help people. And that's, you know, that, that's, that's what blew my mind. And, and that's what formed me to end up wanting to become a police officer. Um, I actually wanted to join the army and then uh, didn't end up pulling the trigger on that. No pun intended. Uh, had to make some real life personality assessments. And, uh, you know, I couldn't things, things that were broken in me personality wise that I couldn't fix that I didn't think would, would permit me to excel to the areas that I wanted. So I, uh, so I tried law enforcement and, you know, that was, that was, that was the, the brotherhood and the, the, the family and, and, and the sense of service and being able to help a community out that mattered to me. Um, so that's kind of how I ended up where I was. And now you play Brock Reynolds on SEAL team and Dita is alongside you. So how did you land that opportunity and how has, how, how have you and Dita been received by the military community? Um, well, I mean, so most people would say there's Dita the hair missile and the human next door, but I appreciate you making me feel so important right here. <laughs> um, you know, I owe it all to her. Uh, um, Mark Owen, who wrote, you know, one of my favorite books, uh, No Easy Day and No Hero, uh, is an executive producer on the show. And he asked me to come down with the dog uh, for the pilot episode. And I did. And, and, uh, and the rest is just history. Um, it just, it just random acts. Uh, you couldn't, you couldn't predict it. You couldn't, you couldn't calculate it. It just happened. Um, <laughs> It was a one, a one in 10 million chance, if that, you know, uh, that I end up as a character on a hit TV show three, four years later. <laughs> um, you know, in the way to the military, I think that a lot of, a lot of guys from Will's old unit and from the army side of it, uh, were really kind of like, uh, uh not too easy with this whole show when it first came out but mm -hmm. i think after the first season guys really realized that this show is in it, it pays tribute to uh, to these guys it is it is it's not there to focus on the negative stuff it's there to really address some of the issues uh and and now you know now we're able to participate in charity organizations that uh, wouldn't be seen with us in the beginning just because they've seen we have a track record now of okay cool this show is out there and this show is this show honors our men that serve in uniform and it doesn't just tell the story of navy seals it tells the stories of american war fighters it tells you know a story of what home life is like for them um one of the things that touched me the most is um 
is is a dude from one of the special mission units said to me was uh was this show gave him an opportunity to watch it with his kids hmm. and give his kids a platform to ask questions because he's never talked about what he's done for a living and he'll never tell him what he does for a living because he's not supposed to it's not he can't but this show allows his kids to kind of understand a little bit about more who a little more about who he is um you know i got stopped by a veteran on the street um and uh they thanked me for the psa and that whole storyline that we did oh sorry <laughs> They said that they called the number and it saved their life. And it just chokes me up every single time to think that so many people are out there with so much pain. And if one TV show, just one TV show can make a difference to help somebody like that. And then, then my, you know, I feel so honored and blessed to be able to be part of that. Um, how many people are watching this right now? <laughs> Let me know how many people I'm crying in front of. Um, you're good. You're, you're good. good. You're good. Uh, you're, what you're sorry. saying is it, it's so stuff, important. It, it just more real than that. It just takes one person to, to care, um, to help someone. And if your vehicle is television to, to help someone, that's your that's your gift. And I there's so blessed it, that I can be part of this show. And, and as long as this show keeps helping people, I want to be part of it. Um, it's, it's, it is truly, it, I, I feel like it's beginning to define who I am. And that's, that feels good. It's, it's a beautiful thing, actually, right? Mm -hmm. You're, you're helping others. And then the, what you're realizing within yourself too. That's, that's, I love that. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you for sharing. Yeah, thank you. It's a big, You've been, it doesn't get any more real than that. There's, um, when that show can help one person out, it's just, I know exactly how you feel. That's why I didn't the book. I tell my TBI story as well, because of telling my thing can help one person. And, uh, I don't want to talk about me. I don't care about me. But and there's me. one person that you know, but how many people are you helping that you're, you don't even know about yet, right? I don't yeah. want to talk about myself, but if my story can help one person, yeah, you never know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think you do that, Justin. It's, it's, it's tough. I mean, don't think that, I think the writers, they're the ones writing that, you know, th it wouldn't happen without them. It's, uh, it's, you know, they took a huge gamble and a huge chance putting that whole storyline out. You know, people, you know, network TV has never seen a show like SEAL Team ever. And, you know, they took a huge gamble and, you know, Spencer Hudnut, our showrunner, is he... He he went all out and and he crushed it on it. It was it was it was game changing, and I'm excited to see where the show goes. Yeah, well, thanks for doing the law enforcement awareness as well with the dog. I mean, that's so that's such a good idea to bring, you know, connect the kids with law enforcement through an animal, and um, you know, like you said, sometimes that that connection needs to be there. It's very important. One of the one of the biggest uh, perks of being a Navy SEAL was all the law enforcement people I got to work with. <laughs> Oh my God! Like some, you know, seals were made. All the people in the military, the the police as well, some amazing people. And so, thank yeah. you for for doing that too. That's a great way to get that message across to kids. And Dita's Dita's a sweet girl, so I imagine it works out well. Is the bat? I need to make oh. a sound so kids can ride her. <laughs> <laughs> and grown ups. Just kidding. <laughs> you guys have been getting a lot of feedback on social media. Um, Justin, when you were um, talking a few minutes ago, you were getting a lot of likes and loves and the new care emoji. Um, I don't know if you've seen that, but a lot of people are saying thank you. Uh, we have some associates who are watching from around the world. Um, Bagram, Iraq, um, they're all saying thank you. Uh, we pr appreciate you supporting our war fighters on the front lines stay safe. Um, Kay says, amazing book. Thank you for writing it and sharing your story. Hello from Tyndall, um, Fort Buchanan. 
So you have people watching from all around the world, Germany, Ramstein. Um, Celia says, hello, what a testimony. Blessings to you. I'm crying. Um, and someone else says, thank you so much for sharing your stories with us today. So moving. We did have a question. Someone asked, um, how, how old is Dita? Hey, Dietz, why don't we just ask her? Come here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. You gotta let go of your ball. Where, where'd you go, Dietz? I gotta hey, see look right there. How old are you? Tell him. Tell him. Tell them what? She said she'll be six in a week and a half. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes, you will. Who's daddy's little princess? <laughs> oh. Oh, look at her. Sweet Dita. Sweet we also have someone who asked Did Cairo father any pups? No, no pups. No. Okay unfortunately i know my biggest regret was having tita fixed yeah yeah awesome. so i'm gonna chief, switch gear oh go ahead go ahead Leah. i was just gonna ask if you saw any other comments chief that i did there was I one uh, there was one justin from from robert he, he i don't know maybe you can't give away the secret but he asked uh last seal team episode dita was being evaluated for her continued service in the team Will this scene develop into more drama with Dita? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But what You'll I do have know, to watch. back for season four, so you can tune in uh, on Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. and find out, buddy. That's right. <laughs> there you go, Robert. Find out. There you go, Robert. You heard it there. Hey, so I'm going to switch gears on you, Will and Justin. As you know, war fighters need to be fit to fight, right? You, you're, you're aware of that. Physical fitness, of course, is important to the both of you. What is your daily routine like? What, what about your fitness lifestyle, your diet? Are there exercises or products our community should know about? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah, there's definitely a couple. Go ahead, buddy. Mind and body is everything. Um, I, I'm a big subscriber of a lot of body weight workouts. I try not to push anything over 60 pounds, uh, but I try and do massively high repetitions. Uh, as I get older, almost 40 it's getting a little bit harder so i've been crushing i start i usually do i have like three different pre-workouts that i love and i alternate all the time i'll do one for a week and a half and then i'll switch because they just start you start getting used to the formulations on them um muscle farm has something called wreckage which is <laughs> which which is literally like the strongest thing in the world um, so I go to that. That's my, that's my, that's my third cycle. When all else starts to get my body gets used to it, I go to wreckage and I'll use that for a week. Um, they've got a few products that I love. Uh, I love their, uh, protein crisps more than anything, just because my diet is legitimately boring. It's, if you follow me on Instagram, you know, it's steak pretty much five nights a week. Uh, and every day is just ground turkey breast and eggs. You know, sometimes actually, I'm actually snacking on those, like literally right now. <laughs> oh, and I, I wish I, bought, yeah, I had some, I snack on these this is what I snack on, which is no there. federal endorsement intended for anyone out there. I just, I actually snack it, it, on these. And incredible saying. product, man. It's low calorie, it's gluten free, and it's got 14 grams of protein, yeah. you know? Oh. So, you know what they say, sir, you got to eat big to get big. <laughs> so. Yep. Um, I, I, I'm a big cardio guy. You know, I think it's important to be able to run. Uh, if you, if your body can function under, under, under fatigue like that, you can do anything. So five, five miles, no matter what the temperature is, I don't bring water out. I just get through it. I'll drink water when I get back. I'll drink, I'll hydrate before I go, but I really like pushing my body in that, in that, in that, uh, in that environment. And, uh, other, 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 I mean, eat clean, eat right. Your mind is your body and your body is your mind. Um, think healthy. You know, what's funny, Justin, uh, we interviewed, you know, Chef Robert Irvine. We had him on last week and he says, listen, lifting big weights, that's easy. Get yourself some lightweight and do 50 reps. Then you're going to mm -hmm. feel the pain. And it kind of ties into what you were saying where you're not pushing anything over 60. Well, you know, the, 
the other day I was, I was on a caving ladder with a bunch of dudes that were 10 years younger than me. And they all work out so hard lifting heavy weights all the time, but they can't climb a caving ladder without their legs. You know, it's because they're so heavy, you, you know, it's like lightweight, high repetition, build that core strength up and you can do anything. Yeah. So. Cool. <clears throat> I would say that it's my, so my daily routines, I wake up and I, I got a pretty nice place on the water. So I get out on my back deck and I breathe and I do a little stretching and I pray. You know, that's my, at least if I get 10 minutes of that in, that's something. And then uh, we'll go from there. I try to do, I try to do some more, uh, a lot more stretching, a lot of core. And uh, yeah, I do a lot of body weight exercises these days. I do a lot of swimming. I still love to run, but uh, you know, I'm try- I don't want to push it in my knees. I don't want knee surgery. So uh, <laughs> Uh, I do a lot of swimming and then, yeah, the protein, I got a whole box of good stuff in there. I'm trying those crisps are delicious. The bars were good. I haven't, yeah, that's a lot of protein. Um, yeah, like you said, um, my diet needs to be better. Mm, that's, barbecue diet? will Let's be honest. Let's just be honest. My diet is not the best right now, but, um, I blame it on the Corona and you know, <laughs> fasting. So, you know, a big part of the book was um, to tell Cairo's story, bring attention to the dogs and tell my story, the, the, the brain injury stuff. That was um, yeah. a very rough time in transition out of the military. Some other stuff. I had some other issues as well. But um, nowadays, what I really am passionate about is especially the traumatic brain injury, the brain health side. And I think these modalities are there's so many. There's fasting, there's your diet, um, any inflammation, you know, um, so Ice baths, sauna therapy, like that breathing and meditating and praying. I really believe that there's some really good stuff to be said there. Like people kept telling me, meditate, meditate, meditate. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> it's, but I, I really believe if not, then like some deep sort of breathing exercises. I think these are all really good uh, brain health things. And I'm, uh, you know, in 2012, I said I was injured by a hand grenade. Mm-hmm. And I was, in a, I was in a real bad place. It, um, I was basically drinking myself to death and my brain wasn't working. And it was, it was pretty bad. So I ended up going to a brain um, treatment place through the Brain Treatment Foundation through a great lady, Kara Williams. But it took uh, one of my best friends, his name is Jared Shaw. He reached out and if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't have went because I was just self-secluding, drinking. And my, it's, it's weird when it's your brain because, you know, it's, it's your brain. You can't put your finger on it. Something was off. I could tell something's off, but it, so he reached out, it took my best friend reached out and he took me to one of these um, treatment centers. And it was a uh, beneficial, I think it was a first step into a very long process of different modalities that I think some might sound hippie-ish, some might not work. You know, everybody's different. <clears throat> I heard some of these modalities, even some some of my, my from my teammates that I respected, I loved and respected with all of my heart. Like one guy told me about intermittent fasting and I just kind of listened to him, went right over my head. I'm like, oh yeah, cool. He didn't call it that. We call it something else. And then I tried it years later when I heard it in a different context and I lost 70 pounds. Mm. And that's the kind of huge on my brain health as well. And there's all kinds of, this is just, there's float tanks, there's you know, anything, CBD. There's, um, I could go on all day long about different modalities that can help the brain. And that's what I'm trying to dive into now. Sorry to go on, on this long tangent. We were just talking about, uh, when Justin, or, uh, he brought up health and wellness. I really do believe, um, it's very important. It's very important. There's a lot of different really good points. And, and we've had, we've talked to a number of different people, but you're the first person to, to bring up the meditation and the other, other types of wellness being, you know, well, well with your brain, you're, you're the first guest we've had to, to discuss that. And, and I think that our audience really needs to hear that. And, and you're a survivor and you know what it's like, you've been there stressful situations it doesn't help to freak out and i always just think back it makes sense to me now what did i do in buds in seal training i would in the cold water go to your happy place (laughs) i would breathe right deep breathing and whatever go to your happy place uh even when you're in stressful situations calm down relax breathe and that so even nowadays it makes sense to me it's it's free god gave it to us i get out here you know if i can do some deep breathing and you know if i feel my connection with god is very important as well so i do that and if if i knock that out every morning it's something and then i'm I'm trying to i'm trying to lift heavy keep up with justin (laughs) (laughs) 
All 60 pounds, all 60 pounds. I got it. You know, I got to take it. I take it easy. I do a lot of stretching and um, try to swim and do a little running here, but I, I take it easy with the weights a little bit, but I, I try to do, I, I think weightlifting is great. There's a couple of places I'd like to attend, some uh, physical therapy places I'd like to go to to try to get some work done. Will and Justin, is there anything else you want our viewers to know about you and the special dogs in your life before we say goodbye? I'm a Libra. <laughs> <laughs> Duly noted. <laughs> <laughs> No, listen, guys, you know, life is short and uh, and we're here for a very finite amount of time. So do your best. Treat people kindly. I always say treat people the way you'd want them to treat your children um, and 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 ask what you can do to help people. And uh, there's a lot of people on all spectrums that can use some help. So figure out what touches close to you and what things you want to be part of and, and, and see what you can do to help and contribute. Great. That's great advice for going forward. What about you, Will? That's it. Find um, what you're passionate about and then where you can help the most and run with it and give it all you got. I mean, and just be, um, and like you said, be in the present and like these dogs, they teach me to be in the present. You know, it's one of the things I've learned you never know when you're going to lose them. I lost Cairo all of a sudden. We had another dog named Hagen. She died at six all of a sudden one night. Uh, so now I just don't take them for granted. Uh, they teach, they don't, they also like, they don't think about the past. They don't, you know, or they don't dwell, dwell on things. They don't think about the future. They're just like right now they're in the present. Mm -hmm. So pay attention. And not only that, it's so like I pay attention to my dogs, but it's also like now, you know, if I'm busy, I got a lot of stuff going on. But like, hey, she gets me not only pay attention to them, but pay attention to my family. And if, you know, if your employers too, you know, dogs can kind of maybe get your attention to like, hey, be in the moment for a minute and enjoy and like, you know. Yeah, I want, I want you, uh, can you both do me a favor, Will, Justin, before we do go, I know those are your last words. I want you to give one more, one more set of last words regarding the charities you were talking about earlier. You were talking about Will earlier on, you named a bunch off. I think Justin, you did too. Could you please name them off? So everyone watching can know what they are. Maybe if they find it as a worthy charity, they could go and donate whatever it is they want to do to support that charity. Can you please name them off if you recall them all? Yeah. You want to do that, Will, or you want me to start? Start off with a couple, and then you can pick up. There's a lot that I'm, and I don't want to forget anybody, and I apologize for the people that I do, but, um, you know, there's the, Marcus Luttrell has one, the Lone Survivor, right? Um, Johnny Wilson, Still Future Fund. Um, it's Carol Williams has Brain Treatment Foundation to help me spikes so for, that's for um i'm sure there's a couple that i'm forgetting on there and then for for dogs i said jimmy hatch spikes canine fun mike ritlin warrior dog foundation john divine rescue 22 um there's um there's a lot of other ones who am i forgetting so there's a lot of law enforcement um who am i forgetting justin uh well i'll start with the dogs and then move to the humans uh canines united is a good law enforcement dogs uh, retouch what he said, Rescue 22, Warrior Dog Foundation. Those are both phenomenal uh, by former SEAL canine handlers. Rescue 22 helps pair working dogs with veterans that need dogs. Dita got one for a, uh, for a, uh, uh, a double amputee Marine that we met at a CBS event through Rescue 22. The guys from uh, Tribe Skates who are both former SEALs uh, helped coordinate that donation as well for him, which was incredible. Uh, the Navy SEAL Danny Dietz Foundation is incredible. Uh, the Chuck Keaton Foundation, those are both, uh, those are both uh, former uh, SEALs that are no longer with us on this earth, uh, that their families have set up foundations to help the families of other. Uh, one of my personal favorites out there is one called Word of Honor foundation and it's a very small foundation but <laughs> i know 99.9% .9 of the money of it goes to gold star kids from uh from the seals and they organize really great mentoring programs for their children uh then uh god there's so many incredible organizations out there all in all the time all in all the time great uh 
the um I had another one, isn't it? No. What are, what are we and sadly I know we're gonna between the both of us, we're gonna skip a few. So guys, I'm sorry, but so sorry. But you can always DM or or leave a message in a picture on Instagram about charity. And I promise mm -hmm. you, if I don't answer a DM, just put it in the picture and I will get a I'll get it, I'll get to it and, and answer it. But uh yeah, let's get out there and help some people. Let's this is a dark time for our country. Uh Let's see how we can turn it and make it positive. Of course. What else? Okay. We Sentiment. Well, Will and Justin, thanks again for spending time with us today. It's been an honor. We appreciate you and your support of our airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines, and Coasties, and of course, their family members. We truly appreciate you spending time with us today. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us on. Thank you. Stay on for a minute after this, please. After we shut off live. Please. I'll stop the live, but don't hang up. So thanks so much, y'all. See you guys soon.